Good morning and thank you for showing up so, so early. So I'm Cyril from TPAC. So if you didn't have a chance, we, you've probably seen there's a big booth. So we, we're over there. You're more than welcome to visit us. We do ultrasound, all sorts of ultrasound, among which uh, some advanced stuff that I'm going to show you with TFM. So today I'll tell you about uh, new imaging approaches, in, among which uh, TFM. So if you, if you read the abstracts, it was packed with a lot of names, acronyms about uh, advanced algorithm. And actually, I decided to take it a notch maybe lower in terms of complexity, because I realized that, first of all, it was very early in the morning after the, the gala dinner. And also, my, my colleague Nance will cover some of this aspect and will give you a deep, deep, uh, uh, a deep dive into, into these techniques at, uh, at 10 o'clock, I, I think. So uh, still, I will, uh, we will talk about uh, FMC, TFM and more. So the idea for me is really to give you an idea of what TFM can do for you. For the, maybe for you it's a bit abstract, not really concrete. You imagine there's something for research not, with no real application. So that's what I want to show you. Also show you that FMC TFM is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of imaging techniques. So you have conventional UT, phase array, FMC TFM, and you get into a new world, different world of imaging techniques which is a kind of toolbox with different strategies for acquisition. So I will insist a lot on this acquisition reconstruction aspect, so two-step uh, imaging process. And also show you that TFM, if you think it's slow, yes, it can be slow, but sometimes it can be fast. So I will show you some examples of industrial applications where actually we can go, uh, we can go very fast. Some quick acronyms of, of course, phase array, FMC TFM, uh, full matrix capture, TFM, Total focusing method, I will explain you that. Another technique, plane wave imaging, which is a variation of FMCTFM. And the adaptive techniques, which are used actually to inspect some complex shapes, which is something very, very important. It could be a, seen as a limiting factor of TFM. And with these algorithms, we can, uh, we can actually go beyond this, this limitation. So start with phase array, uh, multi-elements. So you, I guess you all know that, the concept of beam forming. You've got some delays. You send the energy, you receive, and you typically you do the same focalization. So it brings a lot of benefits. Uh, you can replace many conventional probes with phase array. You will be able to focalize uh, also to, to beam steer, so change, change the angle. But also you have to be aware that with phase array, you're typically going to, to see where you look. So if, for example, I'm shooting in this direction, I will only see here. And you will see that with FMCTFM, we, we lift one of these with big li limitation. So, the main thing we could say about, uh, about uh, TFM, FMC TFM, is that you have the same block inspected with phase array, with the same probe, and uh, with FMC TFM, you can see that it's like putting glasses on your, on your image. You get a much higher resolution, but it's only one of the benefits you're going to get with, uh, with TFM. So I go back to one very important concept. So I told you about beam forming. So typically when you do, uh, you do phase array, so you have an, an example of acquisition unit we have. So you're going to pulse with a delay low. So you will do your beam forming in reception and you will get immediately a, a, a sectorial scan. You can get a linear scan as well. So it's a pretty straightforward process in terms of uh, image building. Uh, what is important to understand is that with the imaging techniques among which FMC, TFM, if we say FMC and TFM, it's actually because you have a two-step process. It's still happening in real time, but first you're going to do the acquisition and after you're going to do the reconstruction. So FMC is one way to do the acquisition. You will see that we can have all the strategies. And TFM is the algorithm of total focusing method. So it's really these capabilities that you will have to focalize at every point of your image. So every pixel is a point of reconstruction, a point of focalization. So it's really as if I could look at you at the same time all together. With phase array, I will typically focus only in the middle or at the a given depth. With TFM, I can look everywhere very clearly. So keep in mind this two-step process. And in our, in our case, we've taken um, a special approach is that we are doing on one hand, the acquisition, of course, in the electronic, and after we transfer all the data in the PC. So we are going to use a graphic board, GPU, which has the benefit of being a very good at handling a lot of computing in, in, in parallel. And that's very different from the typical FMC you know, which is hardware-based. So you're going to do everything in, in the hardware. So you've seen probably some portable equipments. And this approach has been taken because essentially for a reason of, of low power consumption, because if you do this two step in your FPGA, you're going to, to need less power, which is critical when you're building a portable. 
In our case, we've taken the, the box approach. So we've got some very compact boxes where we will be able to do the, um, to do the acquisition and we'll transfer everything to the PC where we use a GPU, which is getting uh, better year after year. So we're getting actually faster year after year. And you will see that it gives us putting these two processes apart. So of course, everything is happening in real time, but we put them apart, we can really optimize. We can optimize the acquisition depending on what you need. And we can optimize also the, uh, the speed of the reconstruction and the kind of reconstruction we're, we're doing. So here's that the typical full matrix capture. So maybe you've never seen but, uh, this, this green part, but that's what we call raw data. So that's what you acquire during the full matrix capture. So you might have heard that you're firing one element and you receive on, on the, all the elements. So for example, if you have 64 elements on your probes, you will collect 64 A scans. And you do this for all the elements. The beauty of this approach when compared to what I was telling you for about phase array is that phase array, I take 16 elements, I fire in one direction, and if it doesn't come back on these 16 elements, I lose information. Here, when I fire with the first element, so I'm the first element of the probe, you're the last one on the other side, the energy will go in, in the room, will come back, all over the probe and I get a chance actually to collect this energy. If I, uh, um, I were with this phase array, I would lose this information. So we're going to be able to collect more information about the, the region of interest you want to inspect. You do this, you step a bit on the side, you do this with the second element, you do the same. So you're going to, to get all this raw information that typically with, with phase array you lose. So you have more information about the material, but at that stage of the reconstruction cannot be useful because uh, you, you cannot see the, the, the defect yet. So that's where we always have, after the full matrix capture, after the acquisition, we go to the reconstruction. So the idea of this, uh, of this algorithm is that really that for each point of this, uh, of this image, you're going to do a calculation. Remember, when you're doing phase array, you collect the S-scans uh, as you receive, and you just put the, the S-scan side by side, if you're doing a linear scan or, or a secular scan, and you get your image. So you get the scan directly here. It's something that we're going to reconstruct. Acquisition, reconstruction. And you can understand that if when you have these two steps, we can have different strategies for acquisition and different strategies for, for reconstruction. So uh, also you, you're going to understand how we can improve the, um, this, this, uh, this process is that you can work on optimizing the throughput, the data transfer you're going to have between the between the the acquisition unit, and you can also optimize your algorithms in order to get something uh, much faster than you 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 would typically get. It's also where I can introduce different algorithms because you well, you might have heard about also about PCI phase currents uh, uh, imaging. It gets into this fam this uh, toolbox as I mentioned this family of of imaging techniques. Uh, that, that we, we, we can use depending on, on, your, on your problem. So I said before that we could have different strategies in terms of acquisition. So there is another one. The, I mean, the, the first one among all the different ones is what we call plane wave imaging. So you still have the raw data in that case. So you can see that it has a bit of a different uh, shape. You can see here an angle. So actually we're firing 64 elements at a time. Here we're firing everything at zero degree with different angles here. And the idea is, is that you're going to get less cycles. You remember with FMC, TFM, when you have 64 elements, you have to fire 64 times. Here, we have a strategy where we're going to use only five angles. So we fire five times with different angles. Also, the idea is that you're going to look at the material with different angles in order to collect more information. And still, when you use this technology, when you fire the whole probe together, you'll be able to collect on all the probes. So if the energy comes back where you would not get it with your with your with phase array, here you can still collect information about the um, uh, about the material. And for, it, it's this kind of strategy is going to depend on what you want to to detect. For example, if you have a, a part where you want to detect some flat bottom holes that will typically answer uh, at zero degree, you can just use a few angles around zero degree, and you will still collect the information. If you want to have higher angles. That's where you're going to increase the number, the number of angles. And the idea is also that by reducing your acquisition time, the number of, of, of cycles you, you use for, for acquisition, you will be able to go faster simply. So when you, was, uh, you, you see that when, if you have in mind that FMC was, was slow, actually you can make it faster by, by changing the, the, the strategy of acquisition. Uh, still, I was talking about 
plane wave imaging, but actually I should say so plane wave because since you fire all the elements, you generate a plane wave in the, in the material. Uh, still, after you have the TFM part. So when I say plane wave imaging, actually I should say plane wave TFM because we do the acquisition and after we have the we apply when we build the image, we have this total focusing method in order to get to get this this image with with high resolution. So. Also, that's a, a bit of a way to, 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 to summarize. We, you see, bon, with UT or phase array, we have a, um, a block with, uh, with, with some notches with different angles. You see that with phase array, when you fire at zero degree, you lose the other angles. With TFM, since you're firing only one element, you have a huge beam spread. So the energy is going all directions. And since you have the, the big probe to collect your energy, you will be able to detect all the different angles, even though you're not eating directly with a specular angle on, on the defect. So FMCTFM gives you good results. Plane wave imaging also with the benefit of going faster because you're going to lose yet less, uh, fewer cycles in terms of, uh, of, uh, of acquisition. So just to summarize, I've been insisting a lot on the, this. On one side, you have the data acquisition and data processing. You can see that you can have the flexibility in the way you handle the, 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 the firing. So I, we have FMC with one element, plane wave imaging, all the elements. You could also imagine some techniques where you do the focalization also of all the elements. We call this converging wave uh, imaging. And uh, also you've seen that you get access to all the raw data. So that was the green images you, you saw in which we have a lot of information. So we have the amplitude uh, of all the, the material you, you want to inspect. We also have the phase. So if you've used, uh, heard about phase coherence, that's where actually we can also collect with the STEM strategy this information. And instead of on the left-hand side to work with amplitude, we work with phase. And we're going to build an image. So here, it's the same image, but on one hand, it's the information you get from the amplitude, from the phase. If you want more details, Nance will explain that uh, at the end of this, uh, of this session. He, he, will have a, he will have a paper about that. So now some examples uh, of, uh, of applications. So one of the limiting factors of TFM is that if your surface is not perfect or if you don't know your surface, you're not going to, to have a good reconstruction because you, you imagine that if you have a complex shape, there will be a change of angle as you go through the interface and all the computing you are doing is going to be wrong. With, and also what is very important is to know the speed of sound in the material. With phase array, it's not so critical. If you don't have the right speed, you will not focalize exactly where you want, but you will still get an image. With uh, uh, TFM, it's very important. And actually, we have, I was telling you that in this, in this raw data, we have a lot of information. And for example, we can detect the interface. So actually, we can first detect the profile and after change the algorithm. So acquisition, detection of the, of the interface, and after algorithm of reconstruction to be able to generate this kind of images also with a complex shape. So, so it gives you, in terms of application, we can do some well inspection directly from the well cap where with phasery, so we have a flexible weight with phasery, you will not be able to do it. We can also do some advanced stuff, like here it was a, um, an application with selective corrosion. So here actually, you still have, there is, it, the, the corrosion is actually, um, some of the elements are going out of the, uh, of, it was a valve of the material and it, you get an internal interface. And so with a flexible wage, with the TFM, adaptive TFM, we've been able to do this kind of corrosion mapping where typically with, with phase array, you, you would struggle. So in that case, speed is not so important. Uh, I've got another example also, uh, inspection of some, some wells uh, on, on an elbow, pipe elbow, where you have a very complex shape, the surface is difficult. So we've been able to develop some techniques where you're actually using DLA probes, where we can detect the shape of the surface and do this TFM algorithm in order to do also the sizing. Uh, we've been able to, to develop this, um, this technology where with phase array, you would not be able to, to detect. What we are looking for were cracks in this, uh, in this weld. Uh, so now I'm going quickly to, uh, to show you some example where we can go faster. So remember, we have this two-step strategy and here we can optimize the speed. So the full matrix is slow because we have many cycles, uh, 64 elements, 64 cycles each time with 64 scans. So a lot of data to collect. So we can go the plane wave imaging approach. And as I said, you can go, you can even reduce this number of cycles. So make the acquisition even faster, go even with only one, one firing at zero degrees. So we've used this ID 
to apply it some to this kind of large section. So here you have some rolls which are used for for rolling mills. We have also some large uh, diameter um, titanium billets. And so you you understand the idea that when you're doing conventional, if you're doing conventionality, for example, three three elements, of course you will go fast. You can have a high PRF even if you're multiplex, you will still go fast. But you will leave some gaps between the different elements. If you try to go with a phase array approach, you will do a linear scan. So you will have a high resolution or anyway, high density of energy in the material, but it's going to be slow because you multiplex, but you have more cycles. Here, the idea is that in one shot, we can fire all the elements, collect the information, and after you apply the TFM, so you're going also to have a high resolution. When you're doing phase array, the highest resolution you could have is the, the size of the elements, actually, laterally. Here, you can even calculate points between the elements. So if I have one, uh, one millimeter uh, pitch for the phase array probe, the resolution my B scan will be one millimeter. Here, we can go lower, actually. It's only a, a computing uh, limitation. Another example, uh, well, we had this presentation yesterday to, to, to show what we can, uh, or we can use, have different strategies depending on your problem. So you shouldn't think that FMCTFM is a one size fits all. I think you should most just see it as a, as I said, a toolbox, depending on what you want to do, you can have different strategies. So here the idea was to detect on these big aluminum blocks, you get these kind of cracks, long ones, but uh, so, so we, we apply, so this was the setup we used for, for the proof of concept, but now we're moving to the industrial phase. So the idea was really to have the power because you're firing all the elements of the probe. So with plane wave imaging, so you also have a lot of power in the material. So you can insonify and have a, um, a good power of penetration. Uh, and so we've been able to develop this, this solution where uh, instead of getting typically on this, kind, you have this, uh, this marks, these real defects, and you have also these false indications here. And conventional and phase array were not capable of discriminating. And with the combination of high capability of penetration, because these blocks are doing two meters, so you have to go very deep in a coarse grain material. Uh, and also you have the high resolution because you're doing imaging. We've been able to discriminate the real defects from this false indication, which are just superficial. So now in this case, we're moving, the, the, the solution will be on the trolley like that. So we are moving to the, to the industrial phase. And so it shows you really that uh, we can have different ways uh, to apply these imaging techniques uh, at industrial level. So to conclude, to go fast, um, not only FMC-TFM, when you talk about TFM, really we can have acquisition and a bunch of uh, algorithm tools when it comes to doing the image processes. And uh, also we can use TFM for real industrial applications. So if you thought it was just something for the lab, only for well inspection, now we're really moving to new applications. Here I've got, I'm giving all the examples like inspection of noisy material with specific algorithm. So I've shown inspection of billets and generally large, large cross-section. Thank you.